on the trajectory from beyond, of course, this last week. Jessica Russett from FIG is live for you to the minute. And Jessica, warm well, welcome to you. Uh, the 10-year edging up to 2.191%. So off a seven-month low, but put it into context, the, the kind of the clout of Dudley in real terms amounts to what? Good afternoon, Carson. Thanks for having me. That's right. Uh, we had New York um, Fed President William Dudley speaking last night. It was quite hawkish in his tones. He said that the uh, US economy was almost at full employment, that he expected the inflation to get back to their target rate of 2% soon, and also said that he didn't expect there to be a pause with raising interest rates. So on the back of that, as you did mention, we saw that 10-year uh, yield move uh, for three to four basis points higher to 2.19%. Mm. And so it seems to be that uh, he, he really does expect there to be uh, another two uh, interest rate rises for this year um, and there won't be any pauses for that. So we certainly will wait to see the market though, um, although it has raised overnight in general though that 10-year uh, yield as it is at its one its lowest um, just prior to the rate hike um, mm. in 2015 it was actually at 2.28 percent and so now at 2.19 percent it does still seem um, that the market hasn't fully priced in any more um, rate rises for this year. Do you find comfort with his sanguine attitude on uh, moves uh, in that low yield space? Uh, you know, what that might be signalling out into the future? He seems unperturbed by it, uh, saying, look, if anything, it's all a relative sum game alongside Japan and Europe. Yeah, it does very much seem this assumption that because there is a tighter labour market that what we're going to see from that is there will be an increase in wage growth and uh, as an Im impact will be that there will be uh, growth and inflation. So it seems to be a, a case that although there is a, a weak inflation and weak growth that this uh, labour market which is you know quite robust to that we will see um, you know the impact that they want to see from that and, and so despite the fact that they are getting some weak data mm -hmm. coming through at the moment, that they do expect it to, to be able to look through that and, and have mm. the benefits of um, a higher, higher wage growth. Which is seemingly the tact employed by our own Reserve Bank, care of you know, the, the, the tone struck in the last set of minutes out today. Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we had... Uh, Philip Lowe speaking yesterday where he, he very much said something similar and if anything even urged uh, workers to ask for pay rises yeah. to increase that uh, the the wage growth. Uh, so I very much do think that they're looking through the weak data sets as well that are coming through and expecting, although we don't have the growth and we don't have that inflation, uh, that we certainly will see that come through in time uh, with uh, a tighter labour market. Did he make, though, the crucial uh, link between those uh, demands, if you want to characterise them as such, and a demonstrable uplift in productivity, because one minus the other is really not a sound uh, recipe m longer term, is it? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And we even had um, Fed speaker uh, Kashkari, uh, Neil Kashkari, saying the night prior that he doesn't feel that that's enough just to rely on, uh, you know, a tighter labour market to see this growth in inflation. That, in that, if anything, we should the, the Fed should be holding on uh, any future rate hikes until we do see, you know, stronger data coming through, and that a labour market in itself d just isn't sufficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we could be there for waiting for Godot, as you know, Jessica, but uh, their patience right. seems to have worn thin on Absolutely. that measure. Thank you so much.